of the things that's really important to understand about this crime is the impact that it's had psychologically here in Colombia. Um, again, kidnapping is a historically weighty crime because it affected so many fam families in Colombia for so many years that seeing its resurgence and particularly seeing that individuals who are not just you know, unknown businessmen, but high profile individuals who theoretically should be on the radar of security forces for protection are vulnerable to this kind of violence is really a very disturbing situation, I think, for many Colombians. And so this case, I think, will really raise the consciousness about the importance of taking this security situation seriously. La Guajira sits at the very north tip of Colombia, and this is a traditionally a region that has been a hotbed for trafficking, um, trafficking of contraband, trafficking across the border to Venezuela. And um, over the last few years, that's been dominated by the ELN, which is a leftist insurgency movement. However, um, in recent months, particularly, what we've seen is that a new uh, criminal organization that calls itself the Gaitanista Self-Defense Forces, or the AGC, has started to enter that area to try to take a slice away of the business. So that includes extortion, that includes trafficking. And really what the group is looking for is to connect a corridor of trafficking of arms, uh, drugs, humans, that stretches all across the Atlantic coast in Colombia. Again, the Gaitanista Self-Defense Force is the largest or armed organization by membership, but also territorial presence in Colombia. So this is an organization that has probably up to 9,000 men in arms, um, in addition to being in 24 of Colombia's 34 departments. So they operate, operate really, I think one way to think about them is really as a business. Um, they're involved in the trafficking, not only of drugs, but also of arms. Um, they're extremely involved in uh, also legal markets. So for example, the regulation or taxation of mining companies in Colombia is a significant business of theirs. And really the way that they operate is through territorial control. So territorial control means that they maintain essentially governance over parts of the Colombian territory, imposing rules on the society and uh, laying down penalties for those who would cease to um, you know, protest their governance. The best way to think about these groups is that they're interested in territorial control. And why are they interested in territorial control? The primary reason is to extract rents. Um, so they extract rents from the population by taxing businesses, by extorting individuals, um, by controlling mines and trafficking operations. And the way that they do that is by controlling the civilian population. So again, this includes imposing curfews. Um, sending clear messages through violent actions about the cost of standing up against this group's presence in the region. Um, we've seen a number of very gruesome massacres uh, in recent months in which victims have left in, been left in public places, for example, along a highway, with a very symbolic message to the community that um, there's a new group in charge and these orders are to be taken quite seriously. So La Guajira, again, is a region of northern Colombia that's quite distant from the central um, economic heartland of Colombia. It's largely desert in its climate, and it's traditionally been very underdeveloped. Um, I was just seeing today, actually, that the statistics of malnutrition point to the vast majority, uh, a plurality of cases of child malnutrition in Colombia happen in La Guajira. I think there are a lot of historical explanations for this. One of them is simply the distance and the treacherous nature of the territory. I think another one, though, is that because La Guajira was cited and, and sort of spotted by trafficking organizations many decades ago as a place that was good for business, it's been very hard to break that cycle and to intervene in a way that brings a legitimate state presence. Okay. I think, you know, the it's sometimes difficult to see the crisis. And I think really the way that we describe it is that La Guajira in this moment is living through an, invis an invisible humanitarian situation. Um, the conflict between these two armed and criminal organizations has trickled down directly to the civilian population um, because the means through which these armed groups control territory is by controlling the population, by implementing curfews, by imposing fees, and by undertaking strategic assassinations that send a message to the broader community that we are the ones in charge and our rules are to be followed. So often this violence happens in an invisible level. So if you or I visited La Guajira today, which is also a beautiful touristic destination, um, it might not be evident that there is this deep conflict happening. And the reason is because it's happening at a at a very social level in which armed and criminal groups are seeking to impose themselves on the society.